going away from I'm bad to I'm hurting, but I can fix it is like the biggest shift ever. The reason so many people tear other people's buildings down is because they're unhappy. They're unhappy because they don't like themselves. And that's exactly how I want to live my life. Hey guys, welcome to The Bo Show. This is Change Your Mind, Change Your Life. We take some of the world's greatest minds to steal their knowledge and pass it on to you to become the best version of yourself. Today I'm joined by the sensational Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk, how are you, man? I'm well, thank you for having me. Uh, we are so excited to have you. Evan is one of your biggest fans. He loves your work. We all love your work. You're one of the most popular people on this channel. And mm -hmm. I'm really excited for this one because it, to me, it's the missing ingredient that most people seem to miss. But if you look at all your content, it's one overall message. So Gary, I want to talk about deploying empathy and kindness into business today. Great. I mean, um, it is one of my favorite subject matters. And, um, and I agree with you. I think it's you know, it's so funny. So many people associate me with hustle. And then that word has obviously, you know, changed its meaning from hard work and work ethic to scammy in a lot of ways and has a negative connotation in some places. Um, and I've always wondered why that word sticks. But when I talk heavily about kindness or empathy, you know, maybe it, maybe it doesn't seem natural for that to be a big business trait but it has absolutely been the foundation of my success. Hmm. Do you think it's a reason because most people separate their personal lives from business? So they think in their personal lives, they can be an angel, they can be kind, compassionate, but they got to be cutthroat in the business world. And it's a differentiation. Do you think that's why? I do. I do. I think people think nice people get walked over. Nice guys finish last. Um, you know, I think, um, you know, you got to take what you can get. I, don't, I think that, I think that's right. I think that's exactly the insight to why this has been an issue. And it's why I actually took the subconscious and made it conscious over the last several years of my content, because I want people to know that's just not true. A lot of people say to me, Gary, you always talk about giving, but I, I'm giving and then I get taken advantage of. I'm like, you're not getting taken advantage of. You actually a lot of times weren't giving in the first place. I think a lot of times people are manipulating when they make pretend they're giving. I mean, the amount of people are like, Gary, I, you know, I know you're having a long flight. Why don't I pick you up at the airport and drive you to your hotel? What they're really saying is, hey, I'm going to trade you a drive for a 45-minute consultation. And, and the last thing I want to do after a seven-hour flight is, is, you know, do that. I want to catch up with my family and just kind of relax for two minutes because I'm on the go, go, go. That, that wasn't somebody doing something kind. That was somebody trying to package something selfish. In, and I, I see that little example play out a lot in business. And, I, and so I, I just have not seen the place where doing the right thing, being kind, being a good person, um, being compassionate, empathetic, sympathetic was the wrong thing in that scenario. Now, mm -hmm. I do think all those traits are long-term traits. And, and I think that Sometimes they are vulnerable in the short term, um, but short term fast cash is about the least interesting thing to me about business. Well, like one of your biggest things as well I've learned is, is play the long game. And you're 100% you're right, man. It's kindness, empathy. These are the long game because they're personal traits. They're your legacy. Like I know you're very big on building legacy. People are, dude, I speak to so many people who know you personally. And they're like, dude, that guy is a legend. He's such a kind guy. He's exactly what you think he is. And that's, carrying over oceans, man. So with kindness, do you think some people are doing it and they're, they're trying to basically get something out of you? So it's a trade. So they're yes. using kindness as a yes. currency. And, and, they're, and they're only doing it for the elite, right? They're only doing kindness to people above them and they're doing negative things to people below them. It's the easy, bro, I see this every day. I see it everywhere. People are so confused. Uh, they're like, Gary, I'm kind. I'm like, no, you were, you were trying to be kind to Mark Cuban. But the way that you spoke to the person that just took the bag out of your taxi is a real indicator. Or, or back to your point, I thank you very much for that. There's a lot of people who actually don't love me because I may seem too aggressive on my content, but everybody who's actually spent time with me has a very different point of view in the positive, right? And, um, and I know a lot of people, unfortunately, the reverse. You know, they seem kind on YouTube and Instagram, but their admins hate them. Uh, so for me, uh, what changed my life is 
in business uh, is is adding value without the, ex- the expectation of receiving something back. So would you Correct. say that that's what you would define? Well, well, sub- yes. Well, I mean, a couple. Yes, I, I think. Yes, I would. I would say that's a great definition. I'm sure there's some others that I could come up with, um, but I do think it comes from. I do like what you just said, but I but I remind people on the business context of this. There is an incredible reality. There's a reason the word karma exists in the English language. You know, like, of course, doing the right thing is going to bring good. Hmm. How can't it? If you help somebody and they know it and you know it, they consciously or subconsciously are going to bring you value. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't, I don't know why people don't look at it in the net game. I've had so many people that I've brought unlimited kindness to that have done zero for me and have absolutely sometimes at other turns brought me negative value. But I don't then say, oh, see, this doesn't work. That's only 39 people versus the 3,000 that did in that same pocket of 3,039 people. Would you say there would be a, a fear of some people wanting to, because kindness can be a vulnerability. It's, it's, it's opening your heart and it's going, you know what? I want to do the right thing, but I'm afraid someone's going to step on me. Like when you did uh, one of your. Or your, it's going to be, or it's going to be a waste of time, which oh, then meant yeah. that, which then meant you weren't being kind. You had expectations. Well, that's one of the things I learned from you many years ago. And uh, I'll touch on it then is, when, as soon as you change your life to zero expectations of anyone else, you win. Oh, it's, it's done, man. It's game over. It's game over. <laughs> it's like dude, a cheat I'm code. So happy all the, dude, it's, it's game over. And actually, that comes out of humility. You, you know, I literally don't think I'm in the best, and while still believing I'm the best. And that dichotomy is enormous because it gives you I have confidence and ambition, but it's layered with extreme humility. Like if I disappear tomorrow, like Kobe Bryant's one of the most iconics ever on and off the field. You know, he passed away in tragic form and he'll always be remembered, but like everybody's moving on with their life, including his family. That's what you have to do. And so once you realize that, once you realize that you could be Prince, you could be David Bowie, you could be Kobe Bryant. And the world will give you 24 to 48 hours if you're that iconic and that everyone has to move on to your life. That allows you to really navigate in a different way, which means, look, I don't, in the scheme of things, we only mean so much. At the same token, live your life in a way that you want to mean the most to everyone. Would you say uh, people's entitlement of what they believe they should have gets in the way of them? 100%. I think entitlement is devastating. Especially now with that, everyone's got access. They believe the access they have to the internet entitles everyone to watch their opinion. And when you look at someone like yourself, you've earned it, man. You, you, you do the work. Like to put out the amount of content you do, extraordinary. But that's not entitled. That's earned trust. And by the, by, the, by the way, but I still don't think that it should happen. I'm, I've worked hard. I've earned. I still don't think I deserve it. I think it's a byproduct of the value I'm giving out. It's not, you know, I love the fruits of labor, but when you work with the market, you know, if I was building a fort out of wood, I would understand the fruits of my work. But when you're trying to win with the market, with the humans, they get to decide not how many hours. There's plenty of people put 40,000 hours into their content that nobody's listening to at all. They They didn't bring enough value. It wasn't interesting or informative or entertaining, or valuable enough. And that's too bad. They, in theory, earned it, but the market said no. And so, you know, I just don't have any feelings other than the market is always right, and I must continue to challenge myself to try to bring value so that the market values that. And if it doesn't, it will tell me. And if it does, it will tell me. And, and there's, you know, it doesn't matter what I've done the last 22 years of my life. Hmm. It professionally, it matters what I do this hour. And it's also having humility. Like I'm in a point in my career, I'm very busy right now. Like, like even this is a meta example of this. Like this is not on paper, the best use of my 25 minutes. Hmm. But when people ask with passion, I like doing stuff sometimes. It's just nice. 
and and the appreciation there for this. And I'll just say, right, and, and I'm logical about it. I know I wanted to do this because I think, Bo, you're going to be able to get more guests because of it. Well, you know what? Quick story about how kindness and empathy works and what your actions directly do. No, about three or four years ago, no one gave me a chance in the world at doing stuff like this. I reached out to you. We did a four minute interview on your way to your first ever Vayner draft. Biggest day, one of the biggest days of your life. You gave me four minutes. The video still to this day hasn't even hit a thousand views, but one person saw it, offered me a job, changed my life. Now I work in Hollywood. I work with Netflix, Amazon. I, dude, I, dream, I live a dream life. And that's because you use compassion and empathy to go, you know what? Someone's actually trying to do something with their heart. And I see that in you. So for me, thank you very much because you've allowed me to, to help so many other hundreds of thousands of people. But that's just an example of how just saying, look, I'm going to use my heart, my passion to do something right. So thank you, man. I appreciate what you did for me those many years ago. I really appreciate that. And it's, and it's all I know. I don't understand how anyone doesn't see it. Um, actually, I'm going to phrase that. I deeply understand why people don't see it. They didn't have the luxury of DNA, circumstance, and parenting to give them that perspective. I believe at some level, I'm so grateful for those serendipities that I'm guilted at some level slash motivated to give as much as humanly possible in all shapes and forms, whether that's a silent donation. Like, like right now, everyone's so pressured with everything going in the world. Everyone overly tries to communicate what they do that's good. I've lived my whole life being quiet about everything that I've done that's good. You know, um, I, I think doing good doesn't need to be, I'm not making videos about the four minute thing that you just talked about. That's going to happen. That's your reputation. That's going to happen in the whispers behind your back. Whispers come in two forms, the people that really know you or have interacted with you and the people that haven't. My ratio of positive sentiment on the people that have interacted with me, whether it's four minutes or four years, is such in a greater place than the whispers behind my back of people that have never met me once. And that's exactly how I want to live my life. See, what's the stand? It's, it's, it's backtracking a bit, but you've blended. There's no such thing, it seems to you, I may be wrong, but there's no such thing as your personal life and your business. You live life. Yes, you have private aspects and that's respectable. You show what you want the people to see, but you live life. And one of your great posts that you just posted was, you're not lazy. You're just not doing what you like and you love what you do. So you, that's Correct. why people go, he's a machine. No, dude, if you, if you love playing video games and you do it 23 hours a day, people are going to think you're productive. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And then look, I, you know, LeBron James is a machine. Beyonce is a machine, right? Like, like there's a m millions of machines out there that are less famous than those two, but those are individuals that literally hit the jackpot of loving what they do so much and then naturally being great at it. And I feel like that about my entrepreneurial life. I feel like it was my destiny. I was doing it at six, not because my parents told me, or because I read a book or someone inspired me, I just was literally drawn to the light. I feel like a firefly in one of those zap machines. Like I just had no choice. And, um, and I have fought against a lot of things to be in that place, including what I was supposed to be doing in school, judgment of parents and teachers. And when you're, when you're eight and nine and 12 and 14 years old, that judgment is heavy. You don't like being called a loser by teachers and your parents' friends. And I was a lot, by the way. And um, that builds chips on your shoulders and that builds conviction. So I had the strength emotionally to fight for my entrepreneurship then. And obviously, you know, and obviously now it's popular. And by the way, there, there's undercurrents of it being demonized, right? And so, you, got, you know, these things ebb and flow as long as you stay true to your kindness and your process, I think it will always work out net net. I'd love for you one day to do a book just on your philosophies of life because so many people run at you with entrepreneurship, but if they realize that how you run a business is how people should look at their lives for happiness is the goal, dude, you've, it's, it's beautiful to see and we need more of you. But just a quick segue into, you had a beautiful video called How to Build the Tallest Building Recently. 
And it's fantastic because there are two ways to build the tallest building. Either one, build the tallest building, or two, tear everyone's down. And going into kindness, I know no man is an island. So you've created a phenomenal team around you and it's continually growing. Like I remember the professionalism dealing with your team years ago and I was just astounded how much they love what they do. And would you just, uh, as a, like a fellow entrepreneur speaking to someone else, what do you do that attracts incredible talent to you that aligns with your mission? I realize that I don't think it's incredible talent when it comes to me and it's my job to make them incredible, <laughs> which then makes it very attractive. Now, talent, it has nothing to do with me. So to your point, I believe that most people have things in them, but I think most people die without finding them. And so what I think I'm extremely good at is being a reverse engineer and an architect and a conductor. And so what I do is I listen to them and I watch them and I try to put them in positions to succeed and I remi- and I and I and I feel a responsibility towards them. I don't think I don't think Team Gary V is at the service of Gary V, the character. I believe that I'm in the service of them, which then is probably why you felt what you felt about them because they really then like me because they taste what I'm doing for them, which only enhances the whole process. And then they can find being their best selves, whether I've guided them or whether the process has allowed them to find it. You used a really important word there: service. Uh, Evan, who this channel is, he took me aside one day and said, if you change your life from trying to serve yourself and trying to make yourself successful and big and start just adding value to others and serving them, watch what happens to your life. Dude, in two weeks, two weeks, I had like everything I've ever wanted. And it was like, it was like a magic, like kind of cheat code on a computer game. So I'm glad to hear someone of your stature using the word service because that's what it is. It's serving others, adding value to their lives. It's hard to do that. It's hard to do that if you're not happy. So what? The the reason so many people tear other people's buildings down is because they're unhappy. Are they unhappy because they don't like what they do or they're unhappy because they're jealous and envious of others? They're unhappy because they don't like themselves. And that's in just their core, uh, everything they do. I believe it's often implemented in the parenting they were receiving. And, and obvious, I mean, look, Freud and many other, like this has been figured out long before us, nature nurtures real. And so I think it's a mix. I think it's a mix of DNA and I think it's a mix of parenting and I think it's a mix of the neighborhood slash environment you grow up in. So like for me, I have the kindest mother. I grew up dog shit poor to then like middle class, but lived poor because my parents spent no money on anything completely accountable, oldest kid, you know, merchant at 14, old school 1930 style, come to the family, like schlep two bucks an hour. Um, Fully accountable, never given. And and so, you know, self-esteem and and work ethic, right? And here I am, a very obvious byproduct of the circumstances. So I'm grateful for the people that, in my life that I'm very close to that weren't as luxurious to those circumstances, even though it didn't seem luxurious at the time, I've watched some of them, whether with my guidance or without it, go from a two to an eight. Mm. No different than I now have better muscles than I used to. It can be done if you work the exercise of your brain. You just have to execute positivity and practicality in your mind over and over and over again. You need to surround yourself with it you need to suffocate excuses and you need to uh, lean into that. So yeah, I think most people are jealous because they're so unhappy. Someone else's happiness hurts their feelings. I'm going to take it in. It's just funny, like talking to you like this, but you're like hitting deep within. I'm going, man, those people who've said to me, I'm like, I feel for them. I feel like I, I want to. I do them. too. The reason, the reason I'm here still at the top of my game is because I know how to deal with hate and that hate needs to be dealt with compassion and sympathy, not countered with hate. Yeah. So for all these years you've been doing this, uh, has during like a, a dark moment or a moment where you just like you've hit a wall, uh, what's pushed you through that? Like, cause we've all had that dark night of the soul. Simplicity. Or whatever. Simplicity. Uh, how so? are the eight to 12 people that I love 
by far the most alive and healthy. Yes. Get over your. Guru, man. I hate that word. It's, but it's, you. it's really, it's really true. And I, you know, and even like, and I also don't like, I don't want to be guru. And, but I know that I talk like some weird dude that lives in, like, I like sometimes when I talk, I even, it's funny how you reacted. I almost reacted to it the same way. Cause I can hear myself speak. I'm like, Oh, I'm one of those weird that lives in the Alps that you go and visit and drink some weird potion of like a mix of tea and like rattlesnake guts. And I say something and then you leave and it's like, like I, I keep it very simple. I'm simple as Dude, I think it's your new wine. You got this magic new wine. And by the way, congratulations on empathy. That's such great news. So, and even to you celebrating these victories now, like you have shows exactly where your heart is. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, to your point, like, you know, yesterday I had a, one of the more significant business wins of my career in selling empathy to Constellation for hefty, hefty, hefty eight figures. And honestly, bro, yesterday I replaced my iCloud. It got corrupt. I've literally had the iPhone since the day it came out. So 13 years, I think. I've had the same iCloud, so I have a new one. And like my iMessages were crashing every second. It was just a disaster for almost a half a year. I was using WhatsApp. I was trying to pick, you know, nonetheless. I'm literally more excited that my phone is cruising today than that I sold a major, I had one of the major wins. It's simplicity. That's it. That's and I I mean it. And I mean, for everybody who's looking, listening or watching right now with cynicism, because they don't know me or they don't necessarily like me. You're eventually going to realize how true it is. I love my process. The trophies are fine, but they're just as fine as the booze. The booing from the crowd or the Super Bowl trophy, they're just the same. I, um, I'm just in it in my little world, and I'm trying to make a nice impact, and I, I want to create a blueprint that's replicatable to others, and I want to bounce with some really solid legacy, you know? I speak to a lot of people, man, a lot. I and mean, you're just, you're as real as the person in person, as the YouTube video, as the TikTok account. And it's refreshing. And I think more people need this real kind of like punch in the head to be like, hello, wake up. You're great. You can do good things. So you really can. People, people think they're negative and bad. And what they are, they're hurt. They're hurt. They're wounded. They're scared. And um, Gary, I'm negative. No, you're not. You look at every situation trying to figure out what's going to go wrong because you're wounded and you're trying to protect yourself because you're emotionally soft. And once you realize that, all of a sudden you don't judge yourself as bad. And that just changes the whole context. Going away from I'm bad to I'm hurting, but I can fix it is like the biggest shift ever. That's the sound bite. There it is. There it is. There it is. You can have it for TikTok, but look, Gary. I'm definitely going to take it. It's going to be up. I'm going to let you run because uh, I know you're you. busy, but thank you so much thank for being you. on the Bo thank Show. You your, you're bro, a superstar. You. Your, 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 your vibes were very sweet. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great thank day, you. man. Bye-bye. If you want to see the Bo Show interview with Wim Hof, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. It is all sides. Data, rigid data, cold data. Your happiness, your strength, your health is up to you. What is your choice?